watching Keep It A Green. I'm your host, Debbie Klugers, and today I have with me some very fascinating guests, very interesting guests, and we're going to talk about the etheric environment. Yes. We're going to just talk about what's all around us, and we don't uh, normally see it, really. I mean... Well, you'd have to really develop your higher sense perception to see it. Wilhelm mm -hmm. Reich talked about the orgone energy, which you could see in a nice clear blue sky. They look like little white dots that kind of zip around. That. You could see orgone. And in the pictures, right? <clears throat> actually, when they first looked at the Earth from space, it had this blue haze around it in the pictures, and that's orgone. And the, the astronaut on the moon in a blue haze, that was the orgone energy around them. Yeah. So these things are there for us to see. If we know how to look for them. If you know how to look <laughs> and you're open, I think if you're uh, blocked in your mental th thought capacity in that way, you know, you, you block it out very easily, no doubt. Steve, why don't you introduce yourself and well, Beatrice, okay. you can go next. Before we get too into this, I want people okay. to know who you guys are. <laughs> yeah, I'm Steve Storch from Natural, I have my company is Natural Science Organics in Watermill, New mm -hmm. York. And uh, I work with organic practices for agriculture and landscape and aquatic ecosystems and, and the etheric environment, you know, the, the airspace around you. Important. How to harmonize stuff. that. And this is. Uh, uh, Beatrice Ramos. Um, I'm a student at Southampton High School. And I enjoy being involved in um, like community issues. And Great. From a young age. <laughs> and usually people don't get involved in, you know, I know that you're involved in some important stuff and we'll get to that, but that's really great that you're starting off young. Good job. <laughs> hmm. And um, you know that we start the show off with an environmental tip because you've been on the show before. <laughs> right. Well, since we're talking about the etheric environment, I would say that people should have a look at the organization of their living space and their workspace and you know, look at practices like feng shui mm -hmm. you know, and just where to put things and where to face your chair and your desk and plants and Mirrors objects in the doors. room and all these things, <laughs> yeah. It's an ancient practice. Mm -hmm. So that's the energy tip for the day. You get, right. get and it's easy to do and there's plenty of books and literature and all kinds of ways to learn all about that. Kind yeah, of you can stuff. do it yourself, read a book or hire a practitioner mm -hmm. True. if you want to do the shortcut. True. And Steve, what do we got here? This is a, oh. you just <laughs> put this together this morning. I just finished <laughs> it up this morning. This is something that's been incubating and gestating in my imagination for a while. This is based on a combination of technologies from Wilhelm Reich mm -hmm. to Nikolai Tesla. And the shape actually comes from a really ingenious man named Marcel Vogel, who was a physicist and a mathematician and an artist. And he came up with this. He would actually cut crystals in this shape. And you can see there's a wider end and a narrower end. Yeah. And on the, uh, you can see the, we'll call this the girdle of it. It's, it's all at the same level. And it's got six facets. And this is uh, the male end being narrower. And it just lines up. And Marcel would take these crystals and cut up to 24 facets. So, you know. Wait, it, what is, what is the, uh, the whole principle behind this? Why well, did you build it and what is its purpose? Well, the purpose of this is to generate a uh, positive energy field mm -hmm. and clean up the etheric environment. Okay, and now the etheric environment is this airspace that we live in mm -hmm. and it's been under attack for a long time through things like deforestation building of road surfaces, rooftops. All these things change the surface albedo mm -hmm. of the planet, the reflectivity and the absorption of sunlight on the surface. Mm -hmm. So as you know, the more clearing of woodland there is for either agriculture or homes or parking lots, all of these things change the, this morphogenic 
energy field of our planet. And you could see what we're living in now. You know, it's is extreme erratic weather that we're dealing with in the mm -hmm. natural, you know, the act of God disaster like this oil well. Think about the, the surface area that that's affecting. Um, when I was just first a student at Southampton College, they had a book down in the reference library. It was this thick, all about sea sparkling that the Navy did. I don't know what that is. Well, just when you look out at the ocean and you see like the ripples reflecting okay. the sunlight. So mm -hmm. they were able to look at that with some kind of a computer eye okay. and give you wind and surface conditions Interesting. just by that. So, you know, you imagine that when you look at it, how beautiful that is mm -hmm. and how good that makes you feel. Right. Now imagine that covered with, you know, a couple of million gallons of oil, right, and the smoke from this big fire. How does that change this very sensitive, etheric environment? And we have a lot of uh, problems with animals like organisms like bees, right, which are creatures of the sun. They live completely in this etheric environment, right? So everybody's cell phone, all these, the cell towers, the deforestation, the, all the, the road surfaces. I mean, there's just there's like such a combination that's right of this assault that's going on. And it's something that we, you know, kind of take for, if you notice it, well, we take, for, take it for granted because we just uh, kind of abuse it so intensely. Well, we're so used to it. We're almost, uh, we pay it no attention because it's just common. Like, yeah, well, oh, we've, you know, we've, another environmental disaster. Well, we've become more and more focused, I mean, into the, like, you see how people with their cell phones and they're texting and they're watching things on their cell phone. They've become more and more focused down into this little right. place and it's not, not looking personal. out <laughs> into the broad right. environment that we've been given to live in. The world's become very small. That's right. But uh, we're not paying attention too much to right. the whole, how it all functions together. And like you're saying, you know, this oil spill, what if it affects the bees? And then we have no pollination of our plants. And then Well, it's just, it's going to be <laughs> another thing added into the things mm -hmm. that are affecting it. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that, much, that much smoke and fire and oil on the surface waters, that's just going to change a lot of things that we have no idea mm -hmm. about. But anyway, this yeah. thing is a, basically it's a harmonizer. Okay. To, you know, when it, what it does is it creates a harmonic energy. Now field. this is different than the harmonizers that I've seen on your website, because you've got a great website. Um, with all of that kind of yeah, stuff. Well, this, this looks very different. Well, yeah, this is like a new, new, uh, idea <laughs> coming into fruition here. Um, and it's based on this idea of Marcel Vogel. And actually, over the winter, I had a conversation with a guy who worked on the collider, okay, uh, okay. the electron collider at Brookhaven. And we were just talking about that. And what that is is this big area, and they have two rings. And these particles are propelled by magnets. Faster and faster. Faster and faster. <laughs> one's going clockwise and one's going counterclockwise. And at every intersection point where they cross, mm -hmm. they give off an energy field. Yeah? And this could be harvested into a laser mm -hmm. beam eventually, you know, if yeah, it builds up enough. So, <laughs> so this is really a, a device like that, just based on very subtle mm -hmm. energies. You know, you see the, all these different wells here. This, mm -hmm. on, this is on the female end, and this is on the male end. So the, you know, this is like a Himalayan crystal salt. Mm -hmm. You know, and this stuff, you know, could, and this is set up, could set in these wells in different places. Uh, this is a kind of a big crystal. You know, but something like this, which is very male, kind of Saturnian energy. You know, that would go up and here. And this kind of draws the energy in, or? Yeah, okay. yeah, they draw it in, and, and it's going to, you know, I don't know how much wiring this is going to end up with, but I have some friends that I'm going to work with on this. Hmm. And you could put things, you know, put wire coils in here and uh, diodes, which may only let current flow one direction. Okay. And then capacitors to increase it. 
Interesting. You know, some you LED. You be careful what, what you might create. Yeah. Well, what you would create <laughs> is a very beneficial.